Y'all, how y'all doing? It's late night or early morning, or however you want to say it, here in Buffalo, New York. And it's me, Donna, back at Donna's spot. I just wanted to come on here and share with you an experience I had yesterday, meaning Monday. As you can see, I have a stand back here with a lot of glass on it. And me and my aide was sitting up here at this table and we was talking. And one minute I just felt really sluggish. Now don't get me wrong, I suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome, which is some kind of mental thing that makes me feel drained. And that's because I have all these other health ailments going on with rheumatoid arthritis being the underlying issue to a lot of different things. So with that being said, don't get me wrong, I do suffer from over 50 different ailments. And for me, by only having one child, it's me and him, and he's got to work, so I don't try to let him really know my health issues. I mean, he know, but I don't really try to take it to the extreme of him knowing because I don't want anything to demotivate him and stop him from going to work. And I also have my A, you know, she come to work and spend time with me and stuff. And some days I'm boogity, 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 boogity. And those are usually the days that she's off. And then some days I'm sitting at home. It, it just depends on how tired I feel. So since this pandemic has been going on, I only go out when, ne when necessary for me, whether that's going to the drugstore going to the grocery store, going to get some money, or going to the laundromat. Recently, I laid on the floor to sleep. Some days that's where it's the most easiest, because I figure if I'm down on the floor already, then I don't have to worry about falling down on the floor because I'm already down there. Well, I went to get up and put my glasses on. And my glasses have fell apart. The lens have fell out and everything. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I'm a person that needs my glasses. So, I found this pair of glasses that I just had on. I had to take a break from them for a minute. But, these are a few years old. So, they're not strong enough for my eyes because my sight has changed greatly. So I'm like, oh my God, this is like, I'm scared these glasses are going to drain me and have me near blind. So I called the ophthalmologist, optometrist, excuse me, a couple days ago when they were broke and come to find out they're not open in any appoints that appointments that appointments was set their cancer until they can get back open once this pandemic is over with. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I wanted to know what the time to do for glasses. I know it's time to do for glasses. I really do. But I was hoping that they could fix that pair, and I'm still going to ask them to fix that pair. I'm hoping it's just a screw, and maybe once they put the screw together, then they can um, put my lens back in, and I can wear them and still order me some more glasses. So I'm at a disadvantage already. Okay. So, back to what I was saying. I, I dipped over to the side and came back up. And I laid on the table for a little bit because I was thinking that I got to move. But, you know, I don't know how this is going to happen. 
because with having rheumatoid arthritis and having some knee problems, I have to stand up and just wait until my mind gets in sync with my body and in sync with my knees before I can move. Now, my A tells me, because I don't remember none of this. I don't even know how it happened, but she said I was standing up to move, and next thing she knew, I was on the ground. And all I could say to that is, it happens. Luckily, I didn't hit no glass or hit the stand, because the stand is glass, and the stand has a lot of glasses on it, so I'm glad I didn't hit nothing where it would break on top of me. So the way I looked at it, okay, I'm down here. Let me just lay down here. She like, well, I know you used to being on the floor. No, honey, I'm not used to being on the floor. Sometimes I do things for reasons that maybe other people haven't done for you. Like sometimes my son will spend the night having one bedroom. So since he work, I don't work no more. Then I'm sleeping in my bed and I can lay on the floor. And then when he leaves, I can get up because I'm a night hawk and yeah. But sometimes I just don't feel like being in a bed. Sometimes I don't feel like being on the floor. But either way, you know, it is what it is. So I'm laying there. And I'm not all the way stretched out. So I stretch one leg out. Because this is my road to recovery. I can't, I can't get up if I'm not fully down. Then I stretch my other leg. It was halfway up. Yeah. Then I stretched it all the way, and she was like, "Down to get up." And I'm like, "No, I can't. No." Mm -mm. I didn't want her to pick me up because I was scared she was gonna hurt me, and not purposely or anything. But I'm a big girl now. She's a small girl. I didn't mm, let me do this on my own. I can get up, you know. But she wanted me to get up immediately. I couldn't get up immediately. With me and all the health issues, even with the back pain and everything, I have to get up when my brain is in sync with my body and my body is in sync with my knees and my knees and my feet and ankles are in sync. Because if, if everything ain't in sync, I'm going to be right back down there on the ground. So she was steady trying to get me to get up. She was trying to motivate me. It didn't work, but I was going to get up. I was starting to get up. I'm going to get up. And she like, well, I'm going to call such and such. Okay. I'd rather you not, but okay. So, you know, I'm teasing her. I'm like, well, I just go on such and such. And she was like, oh, my God. I just don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm all right. I'm going to get up. And she was like, well, why you ain't got up yet? So I turned my body over when I could. And I crawled to these chairs that's over here against this wall. And put my arm on it and got up. And she looking at me like, what the hell? And I stood there for a while. I'm like, okay, now you can help me to the front. You know, and she was like, I really scared her. And I really wasn't trying to scare her. I was drained. I was drained. I'd be some kind of tired. Because some days, like I said, I go boogity, 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 boogity. Boogity, 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 boogity. I mean, I'd be everywhere. I'd be up on Grand Street on the west side of Buffalo. I'd be over... On the east side, on the east side of Buffalo, it's everywhere in between, whether it's Walgreens, which is a drugstore I like to go to, or paying rent on Elmwood, or walking to the uh, credit union after I go pay my rent, after I go to Walgreens, or sometimes I go pay the rent and come back around, go to Walgreens. And, Come back around and walk up to the credit union, which is at West Sullivan and Grant, which takes me over an hour to get there by walking. 
But that's my little exercise for the day, so I don't mind, you know. And going to the credit union, put something in my Christmas account. And then, um, and savings account. And then coming out of the year, and, um, if I need something at the Grand Ferry area, whether that's another bank, you know, well, it's my bank, but it's another bank that I would go to on that day if that's what I chose to do. And if I need something in Dollar General or Family Dollar, you know, I try to do a round robin and come on home. Well, now that this has happened, I don't even know if I should be trying to do all that. And now I'm wondering if I'm going to pass out in the streets of Buffalo and somebody going to help me or try to ride me. But anyhow, I mean, I have to give it to God and let God work that out for me so I can get around and still do what I need to do without worrying about it. So, um, yeah, it's rough getting older, and I'm not old, I'm middle age, but it's rough getting older, as I say, middle age, and figuring out what am I going to do, and when am I going to do it, and what I might have to eliminate, because... Having my independence means a lot to me because I've always had to do for self and I never could depend on nobody to do for me. So now that I do have people I can depend on, it's kind of hard asking, you know, and it's kind of embarrassing for them to see me like this, especially uh, my godchildren's father because he didn't been around since he was a kid. So for him to see my vulnerabilities is like, I've been trying to hide it from him so much, you know, but he's a young man and, you know, he likes to hang out and do whatever. And that's fine, cool, I don't care about that. But I've been trying to tell him, okay, you know, I don't want certain friends around me. <laughs> They're your friends. They're not mine. And I don't believe they would have my best interests at heart. And I just don't want them to see where I'm most vulnerable at. And I think, as crazy as it might sound, that when I told him, you know, how I was feeling and stuff, you know, he, I mean, nothing else he could say. If I ain't going to do something, I just ain't going to do it. But I think to hear it a couple of days ago, and then here it is a couple of days in the past, and now I'm at a vulnerable stage, and somebody's calling them, telling them, okay, Donna going through, and I don't know what to do. I think that really kind of like hit home with him. And he, he he's, you know, done what I've asked him. So that's fine and stuff. But I just want you all to know, although we're in a pandemic and we got to be socially distanced, which I don't have a lot of people around me anyhow, so I don't care about that. But... Although I mask up before I go out and, you know, I do what I have to do, I think that we're so focused on this pandemic and this coronavirus and what Rona is doing to people, we're not necessarily paying attention to our under lying issues, those of us who have different ailments, not saying that I don't pay attention to them, but when you got over 50 things wrong, you don't want to be focusing on that all the time. I don't. You know, I want to try to enjoy the positiveness in this situation that I'm in, because these different things I deal with on 
a daily basis. Where with the pandemic, yes, we're dealing with that on a daily basis too. But when you have a combinations of elements that can, I don't know, take the wrong turn or or take you through changes that you've went through before, but you just praying you're not going to go through again or changes that you know, okay, well, you've experienced this before some years ago when you was working and you ignored it. And you wasn't for sure if they're coming back or not. Well, they're here. They're coming back. So I think that's like an eye opener to me because now I I do know that at any given time when that starts happening, sooner or later something else is going to happen. And for me it's like a cloud over my head, you know, and I'm just sweating. The sweat is just running down me like as if I'm the only one standing under this cloud and it's raining on me. I don't know when it's going to come. I don't know why it's coming. But I know that it I just be raining. Just be raining. Sweat on me. Just be raining. Sweat just be coming down. Just coming down. I think that's just my body telling me something near, Something is definitely wrong. But I ain't going to no hospital. Not, not yet. I'm not ready to. I haven't, I haven't been to the hospital since 2017 for emergency surgery. And I am not in no mood to go to the hospital no time soon because my doctor always puts me on a heart health diet. And I mean, I get it, but with the allergies I have, certain things I can't eat by you trying to take away the things that cause me allergies, I lose my appetite because I don't like what's on a hard healthy diet. It takes horrific to me. I'll just starve myself for a couple of days until dietary makes a big deal about it. And then when they make a big deal about it, I order me some fruit and some, you know, like some Italian ice or something and some juice. You know, make sure I got some ice chips and water now just to do that and maybe, I don't know, get somebody to bring me something to eat and I'd be good, you know. <laughs> but I could stand, lose a couple of pounds, so it really don't matter to me, but, you know, I'm going to have to get in tune with self, with self, not self, but in more more in tune with self and really just pay attention more because I see my long road ahead is still there. No matter how hard I work at it, no matter how long I work at it, I'm going to just have to buckle down. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I might have to deal with some thoughts and some issues that I didn't want to deal with. And when it's time for me to renew my aid, I might have to let them know, look, I need a walker. And that was something I really didn't want to deal with. I didn't, I didn't want to accept, but I might have to go that route. Because to me, that's a stagnation. Because I like to be all over the place and be gone and doing stuff, but I might have to try me help. I don't have to pay for it. Medicare and Medicaid are going to pay for it, so I might have to get them to get me one of them big old red walkers, you know, with the good seat in it and put it up against near the door and depending on when I'm going out or whatever, just learn how to move that. And they say it's quite heavy, and I'm quite sure, but I might have to learn how to move that. So, I don't know. And then, I don't know. They trying to sell the house, which I ain't worried about that. But I might need to 
get my bro and put up a, a ramp for me against the house. I really didn't want to go that route either, but I, I might need to do that. I might need to let them contact the landlord that's trying to sell the house and see if they can put a ramp up where I can, you know, take my walker down or up or even maybe get me a a ramp and a lift so therefore if I need to get on my lift and lift myself up to the porch if I need to go grocery shopping or whatever I can without trying to pull it up the stairs and you know I don't know, something I really just didn't want to deal with. It was like, for me, it's like giving in, and I don't want to give in, but, you know, I don't want to hurt myself either, so. I don't know what I'm going to do either way, but, you know, just pray for me and stuff. And if you like these honesty videos with me and my health, let me know, and, you know, we can dibble and dabble on some of the issues and things that I suffer from and I don't know. I just don't know. So if you have any suggestions on what you think I should do so I can be where I need to be, please give me a opinion. And also give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. And I love you all, and I'm going to see you later.